We have got three pie crust recipes in this video and I just wanted to give you a few tips that apply to all of them. They are all baked in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius for 8 to 12 minutes. You also have three options to use for a pie dish. You can use a 9 inch springform pan or a glass or ceramic pie dish. And for both options do grease the base and the sides with oil or butter. Then line the base with parchment or baking paper. If you're making pies to freeze in bulk, you will need to use these aluminium or aluminium disposable ones, which I normally just grease but don't line. Once the dough is mixed, there are two options to line the pie dish with the dough. You could roll out the dough between two sheets of parchment or baking paper, then position it over the dish and press that in. Or you can break it up in the pan and just work your way through flattening and pressing it into the pie dish. Feel free to create a pretty border or cut around the edge to leave plain. Do always dock the base of your crust so you can let the pie breathe in the oven. This is by far the easiest pie crust ever by Carolyn of All Day I Dream About Food and was my go-to recipe before I started YouTube. And it has only four ingredients. Melt a quarter cup of butter in the microwave. To a bowl, add one and a half cups of almond flour, a half teaspoon of garlic powder, then a quarter teaspoon of salt, and whisk that to incorporate the dry ingredients and dissolve all of the lumps. Add the melted butter now, and it doesn't matter if it's really hot because there are no eggs in this recipe. I'm just trying to show you the texture here. It's crumbly but still moldable. At this point, you could wrap it up for freezing or fill in the pie dish and bake. This pie crust is so quick and easy, check this out. Add three quarters of a cup of almond flour to a bowl, a quarter cup of coconut flour, a quarter cup of flaxseed meal, one tablespoon of psyllium husk powder, a pinch of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, one large egg at room temperature, three tablespoons of olive oil and a quarter cup of water. Mix that together, either using a hand mixer or mixing machine until the dough comes together. And you will do the usual as I mentioned before, wrap and freeze or roll it out, dock the base, shape the edges and then it's ready for baking. Grease a pie dish by adding half a teaspoon of olive oil and spreading it onto the base and up the sides, then set aside. To a bowl, add two egg whites or 60 grams worth if you're using carton egg whites, then 180 grams of finely grated or powdered cheese, one teaspoon of gelatin powder and two teaspoons of xanthan gum. Mix that all together and keep kneading until you can form a ball of dough. Cut that into two parts. Then between two sheets of parchment or baking paper, roll out one part as thin as possible. Place the sheet of dough into the pie dish, then press it in. And you should have enough to fill right up to the sides. Trim the edges, then bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius for about 14 minutes. And this is what it should look like. You will notice it's puffed up a little. So do press it back down into the dish. And no, docking the base beforehand didn't work for me. So I did this instead. For the vegetables, I added a quarter cup of finely diced onion, 30 grams of cauliflower, 30 grams of broccoli, 50 grams of green beans, 30 grams of zucchini, and I try to get all my vegetables the same size, finely diced. These vegetables are all optional and changeable. Do feel free to add less, as most of the carbs in this pie come from the veggies. For our meat, dice 110 grams of bacon or pancetta and 500 grams of skinless chicken. 
Over a medium heat, add one tablespoon of olive oil, then saute the bacon and the onions until the onions are golden. And next, add the broccoli, cauliflower, zucchini and green beans and give it a stir until it's combined and then add one tablespoon of dried thyme. Stir again and let that cook a little, then move the mixture to one side of the pan. Add the diced chicken to the empty side of the pan and season with a generous pinch of pepper and one or two teaspoons of garlic powder. Next add 30 grams of butter and turn the chicken over so it cooks a little on all sides. Then add one tablespoon of red wine vinegar, a half cup of chicken stock or broth, then 60 ml of masala or white wine and a half a cup of cream cheese and give that a stir to let all those beautiful flavours combine. The sauce will be quite runny at this point and to fix that I first added one teaspoon of xanthan gum and mixed that in gradually. And if you want a thicker sauce just so the pie can maintain its structure go ahead and add another teaspoon gradually. Let that simmer on medium low for another 10 minutes then turn off the heat and this chicken pot pie filling is ready. For the creamy chicken and mushroom filling start by setting your burners to a medium heat. Add 1 tablespoon of olive oil and when that's heated up add 450 grams of diced chicken. Spread it around the base of the pan. Let that cook for a few minutes until the chicken turns white. Add 1 cup of sliced mushrooms and stir them into the chicken. Then 1 teaspoon of salt, 1 teaspoon of black pepper a teaspoon of garlic powder and one tablespoon of dried mixed herbs. Mix to fully combine and let that simmer for about five to 10 minutes to reduce the liquid. And this is how mine turned out. Just a little bit of liquid left. And now to prepare the creamy sauce. I've got two egg yolks here and this is going to thicken the sauce instead of us using any flour, xanthan gum or cornstarch. To that add one cup of heavy cream and a quarter cup of shredded mozzarella. Whisk that all together then add it to the filling. Keep stirring for about one to two minutes. Turn off the heat and as the filling cools it will thicken even more. With all of the fillings you would add it to a pre-baked pie crust, add any toppings and by that I mean you can add shredded cheese or more herbs and spices or just leave it plain. For this chicken filling we are leaving it plain, then add the pie topper, trim the edges and bake for 5 to 10 minutes at 350 Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius. To make the beef, cheese and tomato filling set your burners to a medium heat. Melt 2 tablespoons of butter then add 1 and a quarter pounds of ground beef. Break up the meat and let that brown. Season with 1 teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper, 1 teaspoon of garlic powder, 1 tablespoon of dried oregano and 1 tablespoon of basil and mix to combine. Next add 3 tablespoons of tomato paste, a half cup of passata or tomato cooking sauce in Rotals is a really good brand and lastly a half a cup of water. Let that simmer for about 10 minutes and you will notice the sauce thicken and become more of a pie filling consistency. But that's the filling all done. I usually top it off by first adding the filling on top of the pie crust, then spreading 1 cup of ricotta cheese and lastly 1 cup of grated cheese but that's your choice. For the French Canadian tortilla or meat pie, heat up one tablespoon of olive oil. The meat is totally your choice so go with what you have and just make sure it's ground. I added one pound of ground pork and a half a pound of ground beef. Then break up the meat and mix to combine letting it brown and this took me about eight minutes. Then I added one third cup of diced onion, one and a half teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of ground sage, a half a teaspoon of dry thyme, a quarter teaspoon each of ground cloves, ground nutmeg and ground cinnamon. Give it a stir just to flavor the meat and combine all those flavors. Then I added two tablespoons of butter just to keep the filling moist.
and last but certainly not least Jamaican beef patties. Heat up two tablespoons of olive oil and then add one pound of ground beef and break up the meat. Then add three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, a half a teaspoon of allspice and one teaspoon of dried thyme. Give that a mix to incorporate all of the flavors with the meat. And now for our greens. Add 50 grams of sliced scallion or green onion. And I have two jalapeno peppers here, which I finely diced, then added. Then stir all of that in. Next, I added one third of a cup of water just for a little more sauce. Stir that in, then turned off the heat and that is all ready. I then just added a sprinkle of raw scallion for crunch. Whichever pie filling you choose, do have a taste of it at the end and see what you think and make adjustments. I hope you get to try any one of them and let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and be well.